Welcome back. Uh, we are going to we are going to continue with our discussion. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ma so uh, you can install the menu. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Ma'am, your voice is not audible. Thank you. So I told you that uh, uh, deep convolutional uh, GAN used uh, fractionally strided uh, convolutions or transpose convolution, right? So. What I'm doing is that uh, I'm using this uh, YouTube video that I prepared for my students and uh, hope that you can hear my voice. Please let me know if you can hear the voice. If you are not able to, I will speak uh, along with this. Hello and welcome to part five of Generative Adversarial Network. Could you hear the voice? It is audible, audible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Today we shall be discussing fractionally strided convolution. Fractionally strided convolutions are used for upsampling. If you remember, GANs use latent uh, variable or latent sample from where it generates the data samples which are as real as possible. So from this low dimensional uh, vector, which is a latent vector, we generate samples which can be images or which can be any other data sample. For doing so, we are using upsampling here through fractionally strided convolution. 
there are other methods also for upsampling like bilinear interpolation or cubic interpolation but this is the one that uses a neural network that learns upsampling through the samples that we provide to it so i will explain to you fractionally sided convolution through an example first we we'll perform convolution operation on a 4 cross 4 image let me write down the image uh, entries here 4321 then 1432 2143 and 3214 suppose these are the image entries and suppose we take a 3 cross 3 filter with entries say 0 0 -1 2 -1 and 0 1 0 you know how to perform convolution operation on this so this will lead to a 2 cross 2 matrix which you know how to compute so 8 6 2 8 you know that we will be applying convolution operation by taking the dot product of this matrix with first the entries here then the second entry can be calculated by taking that dot product of the same filter with the entries here the third entry which is 2 will be obtained by taking the dot product with this and finally taking the dot product with this 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 part of the matrix this 8 will be obtained so from a 4 cross 4 matrix which is a 16 dimensional vector we are reducing this to a 2 cross 2 matrix which is a four dimensional vector so let us write down the convolution matrix here convolution matrix that we are going to write will be a 4 cross 16 matrix because we consider this 4 cross 4 input as a 16 dimensional vector and we can think of this as matrix multiplication by convolution matrix which is 4 cross 16 to a 16 cross 1 so output will be leading to a 4 cross 1 vector which can be arranged in a 2 cross 2 matrix as we wrote here so what is the convolution matrix i will write down one by one the entries so this convolution matrix first of all the first row is formed by taking the filter values 0 1 0 then i will put an auxiliary zero here then minus 1 2 minus 1 i will put an auxiliary zero again and then 0 1 0 <laughs> and finally an auxiliary zero but then we have to make it a 16 column matrix so i will be putting four more auxiliary zeros the next row will be obtained by shifting these entries which are here by uh one which are here by one so up to here so what we will do i will put a sorry i will put a auxiliary zero here and then 0 1 0 and then auxiliary zero before we write minus 1 2 minus 1 and then again an auxiliary zero and zero the third row of this convolution and then finally all the zeros auxiliary zeros so uh, if you see what i am doing is 
that why I am adding an auxiliary zero? Because if you see that uh, this matrix, um, this four cross four sixteen matrix, which is I'm considering as image, is uh, we, when we take the convolution operation, there is a three cross three area of this matrix of this image that is overlapped by this um, uh, this uh, filter, right? So if you look at the very first place. 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, very first place of this. When I am before I start sliding, the very first place will be what? Uh, you will be uh, using in the first convolution, you will be using the uh, upper 3 by 3 matrix 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, right? The rest of the entries like this 4, 3, 2, 1, this 1 is not used. And that is why this auxiliary zero on the first row, fourth element. Similarly, in the second row, fourth element, that is one, four, three, two, this element two is again not used in the first convolution. So it will be minus one, two, minus one. And then since two is not going to be used, I'm using an auxiliary zero. And then zero, one, zero, and then again auxiliary zero. And the last row is never used in the first convolution operation. So all four are zero. All last row of the matrix, the original image, four cross four image. Now, when I slide the convolution operation, convolution, uh, slide the filter, it is the very first, that is four, which is not used. We use three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, right? Green, green bracketed green box within the green box three two one four three two one four three so the very first row very first entry is not used so auxiliary zero and then zero one zero then again very first uh, column element is not used zero then one two minus one and then very first is not used zero again zero one zero and then finally last four entries are not used this way you will be creating this so i just kept here now the third row will be a little different in the third auxiliary zero here so in the third row you can see this yellow one is coming yellow box so in the yellow box you can see all the four entries of the first row are uh, not used so four zeros and then you will uh, proceed in this way right? okay so, uh, the last transpose that we have considered and then we take the transpose of that matrix that is the convolution matrix that you will create you will take the transpose of that matrix my dear friends okay and uh, so then yes. what you will do after you take the convolution uh, uh, matrix construct the convolution matrix and take the transpose let us see what you do uh, we'll be operating on a two cross two matrix. So let us take for the sake of convenience, the same output that we considered earlier, eight, six, two, eight. Now we will stretch this to a vector of dimension four cross one. So eight, six, two, eight. This is the vector. I will multiply this C transpose with the matrix this is suppose z so if we consider c transpose z this will be of 16 cross 1 so imagine that this z is coming as a latent vector so c transpose z will be a 16 cross 1 Dimension. vector right now this 16 cross 1 can be transformed to a 4 cross 4 matrix. So essentially, we have taken a 2 cross 2 matrix convolution. So you can see that you have taken a 2 cross 2 matrix and you have finally arrived at a 4 cross 4 output. So that is how you define do up sampling, right? So this is uh, the essential thing of upsampling. And so in the uh, GAN, in the convolutional GAN, uh, what I am doing is I am using the deep convolution GAN. I am using the uh, 
what you call as a transpose convolution or a fractionally strided convolution. If you remember, I told you that we use fractionally strided convolution and we map. Now, uh, let us continue with our discussion on other uh, solutions for uh, dealing with the challenges that GAN faces in training. So remember the discriminator was having only two binary classification task. Now, instead of binary classification task, it was observed by Selimans and his group that if we train the discriminator on all classes, like your real data sample is coming from different classes of uh, samples. So instead of saying just real or fake, what we do, we classify. We use the classification uh, data that we already have, the label data that we have of say n number of classes, car, dog, human, and all those things. And any other class that is not present, I will call that as fake. So instead of discriminator being trained on real and fake, that a binary classification problem, I will be taking, uh, I will be training discriminator on a multi-class classification problem. Well, as the authors themselves say that it is not very well known why it does better, but empirically it has been studied and found that this does provide a better solution. So the intuitively it is good that, okay, I classify in different labels and if it does not find out, it does not find that it is on any one of these labels because of the varieties, it will classify them as what? Like uh, fake images. So label information of the real data to be given to the discriminator and uh, empirically generates better, much better samples. Uh, that is the uh, method that was introduced by Sally Mans in 2016. So let, let us take some, um, another alternate view of GANs. Just to what? Improve the training aspect. It's difficult to train the GAN. Now, you, if you remember, we used this objective function, uh, expectation of log dx plus expectation of log 1 minus dgz. Expectation means, you know, the average error, average error that we are calculating. So here, what is d star? If I look at, like, d maximizes, d discriminator tries to maximize, that is arg max. I'm looking for that discriminator weights that model whose weights are maximizing this objective function. So let D star denote to be that discriminator for which weights are optimized. That is, you get the maximum value of this. So it is arg max, that argument D for which uh, this is maximized. Similarly, G is looking for minimizing this, right? So arg min G. So in this formulation, what is happening? Discriminator strategy is what? That it is making for any real value, real sample X, it is trying to make dx 10 to 1. That is the probability that X is real, is a, it makes it to clo very close to 1. And in case of fake samples, its strategy is to make dgz to be tending to zero. That is the discriminator's strategy. Alternatively, what we can do is that we can flip the binary classification label. That is fake is equal to one and real is equal to zero. Okay. In that case, what will happen is that I will take this log dx. I will take instead of log dx, I will take one minus log dx. And in case of 1 minus log dgz, I will take log dgz so that the labels are swapped. That's all. But you must be thinking what's great about it. In fact, using this idea, Zhao and um, his uh, group workers introduced what is known as energy-based generative adversarial network. So let us take VDG to be this. In this new formulation, discriminator strategy will be dx is tending to zero and dgz is tending to uh, one. Okay. So if we want the to encode that dx is tending to zero and dgz is tending to one, 
d star that is arg max this will be one log of one minus two plus and this will be log d g z right this is what we wanted but if you look at this part i say that instead of taking arg max of this i will take arg min d x belonging to px x coming from the real data log d x plus e expectation that the average error average log error log 1 minus dz you must be thinking that i am swapping things again and again but that was their idea like they are minimizing the expectation or the average error in case of looking for this d minimizing in case of real samples and trying to maximize this in case of batch samples or fake samples so keeping this idea they introduced a different uh, error function loss function they used hinge loss for the discriminator now what is this hinge loss so they said okay i would like to broaden the gap between the real samples and the fake samples so they said okay i will be minimizing this and i will be maximizing this function this they are taking instead of log probability they are taking this maximum m minus dg z m minus dg z this is the log probability that they are max i mean they are the entire d, d star is looking at maximum minimizing this now how it is going to help here m is a positive margin of the classifier so if something goes beyond that margin that means it must be a fake sample and loss function of the generator is simply dgz so for the discriminator the loss function will be this and for generator this will be simply dgz so what it will do generator will try to make it very close to say this so that this can be minimized but discriminator will try to increase this gap all right and that is what uh, is defined in terms of energy so minimizing generator's loss is equivalent to maximizing the second term in d star maximizing this which is minimizing this okay now thus the discriminator is required to output high values for fake samples so this should be high value for fake samples and low values for real samples so this should be if it is real if this happens to be real then this will be low that is the idea so you use a margin of classifier using this idea they defined what is now known and what is known as energy based gan so they said let dx be defined as decoder encoder x minus x mean square error simply take the give the noise vector to generator let it generate fake images give the real data samples so these are two inputs which are given to this the discriminator is an auto encoder type of model i told you what is auto encoder it is encoding and decoding right so it is basically capturing the true characteristics of the samples the real samples and the fake samples so the idea is that auto encoders are good at capturing the characteristics or the features of these samples so they used what they used the idea of the auto encoder instead of discriminator as a plain network uh, convolutional network or the simple classifier network they used a encoder decoder network and they said that okay their loss will be the mean square error between the reconstructed signal from encoded encoder decoder this is reconstructed signal encoder x then decoder on encoder x minus x i consider this reconstructed signal if this is low this is low that means x was real that is what that is that is their idea so generator will try to generate samples with low values of this 
discriminator will try to assign high score to fake values use auto encoder inside the discriminator and use mean squared reconstruction error as dx so reconstruction error is dx what is out here is like expectation you know when the energy function that i am defining so high reconstruction error for fake samples are generated by dx and low reconstruction error for so what is reconstruction here this x is reconstructed through encoder decoder architecture i hope this is clear to you i hope the architecture encoder decoder is clear to you yes ma'am yeah please keep tell uh, telling me if you are not able to understand anything Ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Now, I'm at the other side. Uh, ma'am, uh, here uh, in this encoder decoder, this uh, boxes we input the generator uh, output and the real image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, now this is this uh, now this this combination feeded to the encoder and from where. Uh, this input is also uh, calculating the msc so the by by getting the auto encoder output and the msc output we get the expectation correct ma'am mm. yeah okay. yeah yeah so what is happening yes uh, one more uh, i got one more query so what i do is that i Oh yes, it is here. What I do is, um, whiteboard I am using. So what it does is that you have discriminator. What is this one? So you have a discriminator. uh discriminator's architecture is sorry i don't know i did use a wrong method uh how to use it um, i'm so sorry this is some creating a little trouble for me so discriminator's architecture is what i'm sorry somehow this one i am not able to get so discriminator yeah oh. i don't know i'm so sorry uh, let me use my own slide to help you with this understanding in fact webex gives me some option of okay so I, because here the <laughs> size is small so you have discriminator so what happens that generator generates right generator generates images so random variable is given generator is generating images some images or samples so some sample comes here like let me call it x prime and then you have discriminator uh, so uh, and then you have real life samples like x these both are going to discriminator now what is discriminator doing it is encoding that means from it is extracting features of both x and x prime all right it is extracting features so like encoder is basically a feature extractor then it will be creating a variable say z and z prime maybe right for x and x prime both it is creating this now from this z and z prime they will be again going to say decoder they will be going to decoder decoder architecture right decoder now this again i will be getting some x hat and x prime hat i will be getting i'm not saying simultaneously one by one some random samples are taken some some could be good some could be real samples some could be non real samples so suppose these are generated 
now it will what it is trying to do is that what it is trying to do is it is trying to minimize this error right discriminator for real samples so if if features are truly extracted from real and fake samples and if these two features are not very close like these features in general are not close what will happen the output will be diverse will be having diversity so x minus x hat will be actually going down for discriminator if discriminator is trained well and x prime minus x prime hat it will try to make in i mean increase during training this is what is discriminator's job discriminator will try to truly capture z and z prime so that it is able to distinguish between real and fake samples that will be the job of the discriminator while generator has access to only this part this part so what it will try it will try to decrease this size this is the generators so that is what i'm saying that the reconstruction error for fake samples and low reconstruction error for real sample that is the discriminator's job but generator's job is what generator will try to generate samples with low values of this that is the idea is that clear to everybody i hope it is clear all right so i give you uh, some example celebrity image generation by these people by i mean these uh, methods thank you you can see that there are still some uh, some some examples like this one this example or this example or this example some problems are there definitely but uh, these problems are alleviated with new um, proposals for gan so generating different elevations is another example <clears throat> by chen they introduce uh, info gan it is interpretable representation learning by information maximization of information maximizing generative adversarial networks so there what do they do suppose the idea is that samples are that we get from real life samples they turn out to be they offer different pose you would like to have different elevation right it can be different lighting that can be wide or narrow all this was wonderfully done by these people and that led to various applications like in design people do what the car model design the car model design front elevation side elevation house design so many things the chair design all these things could be made possible by these types of gan networks so for example 3d chairs so designers could use very effectively these chairs suppose i create one chair and then i very i add variations as somebody was suggesting that make a little variation and you can produce i think group group sheesh or some sarkar mr sarkar was suggesting this you know so let us understand how chen introduced the idea of info gan so here the idea is this we begin with this this idea that is disengagement uh, disentanglement means individual dimensions independently capture key attributes of the image because it can be anything but of the input sample so that, that is what is you can call as disentanglement means each dimension is having some independent features that is uh, um, capturing the basic characteristics of the data that is independent so let us partition the noise vector g into two parts 
Z part will capture slight variations in the image, slight variations. Like you write two, you write two, or you write two, or you write two. So these are variations. Right? Let C vector capture the main attributes of the image. Main attributes might, means there is a curve here, there is a corner here, there's a line here. So main attributes of the image. For example, digit, the angle, the thickness of the image in the MNIST data set. If C vector captures the key variations in the image, right, we'll see an X fake the fake model be highly correlated or weakly correlated? That is the question. So I consider instead of this simple noise, I'm doing what? I'm introducing another vector that is C. It will capture the main attribute and Z will capture slight variations in the image. All right, so this is what is introduced. You can see. Instead of Z, I'm putting C and Z together, all right? So, <clears throat> mutual information is used. The concept of mutual information is used here. The mutual information captures the mutual dependence between two variables. I told you disentanglement. How do we ensure that two dimensions, two features, component, of a feature vector, there are two components. They are uh, related or non-related. So let us consider uh, the relation between uh, this, uh, what is the mutual dependence? How do you define mutual information? Mutual information to, between two variables, x and y, is defined as i x y, which is equal to, the, the that is the information content of these two variables together jointly, that is PXY log PXPY. PXY, PXPY. What is PXY? PXY, you can say, is the probability of X is equal to X, small x, and Y is equal to small y. That is a joint probability of two things happening, two, two events happening together. Joint probability of Capital X becoming capital X taking value X and capital Y taking value Y. For example, uh, uh, the joint probability of a um, person coming from Uttar Pradesh and his age between 10 and 20. That can be one thing. So IXY is equal to, can also be defined as IHX minus HXY, which is equal to, which is the same as HY minus HYX. What is HX and HY here? These are marginal entropies and HXY and HYX are conditional entropies. Don't be worried if you have not, if you don't know what is entropy. Uh, entropy means, uh, the average level of amount of information that the variable gives you or the uncertainty or the surprise it contains. By surprise, it means the variations that it can give you. For example, if you toss a coin, sorry, if you toss, yeah, toss a coin, let us take head and tail. If the coin is unbiased, truly unbiased, the probability that uh, the next uh, time you toss it will be head or tail is half. Probability is half. So it is highly like you really don't know whether the head will come or tail will come. Right? So you can say that it is giving you a lot of uncertainty. That is the higher, higher entropy. But if suppose that uh, a coin was biased, right? If the coin was biased, then uh, and it is most of the time it is uh, giving you heads. So the probability that the head will appear is say 0.7 or 0.8 and the probability that tail will appear is just 0.2 or 0.3. Then 
the certainty is more that head will be head will occur as an event right so in this case the entropy is low take an image in which most of the background is white and there is very much uh, thing very much small information in the image <coughs> you will get low entropy but if you take lena image you know that lena image is one of the most important images very celebrated image and uh, that image is having a good entropy that is why this is considered as a benchmark right for any practical applications so given a random variable x with possible outcomes x1 x2 xn like i told you random variable is an event that will occur when you throw uh, the, the uh, i mean throw a uh, toss a coin so let the possible outcomes will be x1 x2 xn in case of coin it will be head and tail in case of a dice it will be 1 2 3 4 6 right that is will be possible outcomes and the corresponding probability of their occurrence as px1 px2 pxn if the head and tail coin is not biased then head and tail will have the same uh, same probability but they may have different probability as well then its entropy is defined as hx is equal to minus pxi log pxi right pxi or and log pxi so basically log P minus log pxi for any um, event e for any event e its information content is minus ie you can say so uh, this so sorry information content will be like minus log that thing right so i would say that the um, what should i say i mean um, I, i should not <laughs> confuse you by saying this so hx is for example uh how to explain if suppose we write information yeah we write information ha huh, that's what i'm telling it's an average level of amount of information right so suppose uh suppose uh, like uh, p is high value of p is high like i told you in case of head and tail i told you suppose the coin is biased so what will happen that most of the time it will be head that will be occurring so in that case probability of something event happening is high right if it is high or close to 1 what will be this information will be close to 0 close zero yeah i agree with you so this will be zero and since this will be zero so there is like the surprise the element of surprise or element of uncertainty is low and that is what is captured here in log pxi now here uh, event like x is equal to xi will occur with pxi probability and you know that some of these probabilities is equal to 1 right this is equal to 1 and therefore this can be considered as an average level of information that is available or uncertainty that is available you agree with this this will be right this will be and minus is because you know that log goes in the negative direction between 0 and 1 so just to make it positive so i seek your request i request please to please mute your mics because it may be uh, bothering others as also so whenever you are not speaking please mute your mic thank you so now the conditional entropy of two random variables will be defined as h x under the condition y is Minus p x i y a log p x i y a divided by log of p x i y a divided by p y a. All right, this is how entropy is defined. So now I come back to this 
previous slide mutual information is defined in terms of can also be defined in terms of entropies all right so infogan uses this idea we want to maximize the mutual information between c and x c and x whether like you know that the generator has got only fake access to fake so i wish to have uh, to maximize the mutual information between c and x and incorporate in the value function of the minimax game so what we do instead of taking the new the the old uh, objective function they have introduced here a mutual information between c and the output excuse me output generated by g the generator this they have written so what happens so th that is the sorry that is the idea that they have used so they have by multiplying this by sorry by adding this uh, they are able to produce better results in infogan so there are so many representations i will move on to conditional gan also which is a similar type here the information that i am giving is of a class so for example z noise i am giving and along with that i am expecting g to produce say a cat class or a dog class or a human class that is what i am okay so instead of giving just a noise similar that that is a similar thing by mirza mehdi and simon uh, oshi dero that they define conditional generative adversarial network so simple modification to the original gan framework that conditions the model on additional information for better multi uh, for better multimodal uh, learning so remember that i am talking about multimodal that means i am increasing the modes the mode i mean i am addressing the mode collapse problem so many practical applications of gans explicit supervision in many practical application gans explicit supervision is available like for example in conditional gans this so explicit supervision means i am giving a class level that's all so for example mnist digits by conditional gans you can see that lot of variations in zero 1 uh, 2 3 4 and all those things these mnist mnist digits generated through this like of different classes so you can see some of them may be wrong also like this 5 or this is looking like like not very well done this is looking like 8 and this is looking like 7 and 2 but it is giving you some variations and we are able to produce better results for conditional gan remember that these are old results like 2014 but they produce some kind of they wanted to show that mode they wanted to address the problem of mode collapse so you can see that not identical zeros or identical ones are produced they are providing variations in that so then uh, they there there are so many important applications of these gans which were produced like image to image translation text to image synthesis face aging like image to image translation like suppose you have uh, this kind of data like segmented data which is there like cars and the different classes of segmentation then how do you produce this result so input is this output is this input is this you have to generate the output like this and uh, from these labels labels which are given like this is a, a window this is a door these labels are given to the facade day to night black and white color from this very sketch to the real looking output all these things were introduced by this group of workers image to image translation with conditional adversarial network 
this was there around 2016 several improvements and modifications have been proposed but the idea was like uh, we take uh, original image or uh, like uh, that uh, this di discriminator is trained in this kind of uh, settings and the generator is trained to introduce from this input what should be the output so instead of giving say uh, this is the positive example this is a negative example but they are looking so close so that is the idea generator uses this input this as the input instead of noise simple noise input i'm getting giving this as the input to the uh, generator so g tries to synthesize fake images that fool d and d tries to identify the fakes as so architecture is almost like dc gan training is conditioned on the images from the source domain and conditional gans provide an effective way to handle many complex domains without worrying about designing a structured loss function uh, explicitly in the previous case in infogan you had to define structure you have to uh, define a different loss function here they say that we don't worry about having that now text to image synthesis they also you can see i hope you remember that from text to image very good examples are there uses a conditional GAN with generator and discriminator being conditioned on dense text embedding. So let us see, uh, I seek your attention please, on how text to image synthesis is done. I see some examples, uh, some questions. I hope there are no questions. So what we do is that, uh, let us take a noise, just, Gaussian from Gaussian noise function. Let us take a noise vector. This is a multidimensional noise vector, definitely. And with this noise, I'm giving this input, my dear friends. This flower has a small round violet petal with a dark purple center. Suppose this I'm giving. This will be sent to the generator network. That is a noise together with this information. And then generator will be producing some X hat, which is based on the input vector noise and the this phrase that is there that I expect that is I expect the output to be of this type now that will be sent to the discriminator network discriminator network will also be taking as input this uh, this image or this output and will be using the same like this phrase which is given here and based on this phrase and the input that it receives from the real world and also from the um, generator network it will be producing the output the discriminator will be producing classifying them as real or fake so that is what is done <clears throat> So positive examples, real image and right text. Negative examples, real image, wrong text, or fake image and right text. That can also be negative examples. Well, <laughs> there is another very interesting application of faces. And uh, that is uh, uh, using identity preserving optimization using an auxiliary network. I request you to please wait for a couple of minutes. There is some noise coming, so I'm just closing the door. All right, so face aging with conditional GANs. Uh, well, here, uh, these types of applications can be used for security purpose also. Like, you know that a criminal was there five years ago, he was looking like this. You must have heard about 
several criminal uh, criminals who kept on hiding themselves uh, uh, for 20 years, 19 years, 30 years, and they were never caught sometimes. So uh, let us take, so that is one application, but uh, there are positive examples also, like you would like to see how will you look uh, 20 years later. Uh, so suppose I have an input phase of age Y0, right? So this is an input force phase of age Y0. I will extract features, best features using an encoder network. And let Z0, Z0 is the, let Z0 be the uh, extracted features of this input phase, right? Now, I'm not giving any age information right now to the encoder. I'm only giving this. Now, with this, I will be giving Y0 as the age to, to the generator, right? I have, so Z0, I have extracted features. And I have also age information because this encoder is using this age input. Like, sorry, uh, uh, this uh, image of age Y0. So I have extracted features and I'm adding Y0. Now here, from Z0, I'm using an identity. I'm, I'm training the network so that it learns to optimize the identity. So I use an identity preserving optimization method and get a Z prime, which is Z star, sorry, Z star, which is preserving the identity of this. So initial reconstruction, if you say X zero bar of H Y zero, that is produced by generator is this. Right, this is the, so this is the X0. This is X0 bar of age Y0, which will be generated by the generator. That is, it is given age Y0 and the extracted features Z0. Now what I do, this identity preserving optimization I have performed on Z0. So I get Z star and I will again use the Z star and check what, what, how does it perform? How my generator performs? So after optimized reconstruction, you can see that this is a better design. This is a better generation than the previous generation, right? This is quite a good generation than the previous generation. Now, in phase aging application, because I know now Z prime, I can use this Z prime and another age, say 60 plus, and give this as input after G is trained, if G is rigorously trained, what I will do, I will be giving this and the face aging. So it should produce something like this. That is what is resulting face of X target of age 60 plus, right? So that is how generators are trained, that they are you, they are using an identity preserving optimization using an auxiliary network to, so this, this network learns to preserve the identity. This network learns to encode the, the, encode the input image. And this network learns to generate from the features and age, new age, new, uh, sorry, new image. And so it has no idea of what this is. This generator has no idea of what is the face. Generator has only the input Z0 and it is expected to, uh, to, uh, to produce one face of age Y0 and another face of I age, say 60 place. So it was found that this identity preserving optimization network is basically doing well. So latent code is then conditioned on the discrete one hot embedding of age categories. That is how, how it happens. So it's a new interesting application that was introduced by um, uh, these people um, in 2017. And all these, these days, you know, all the papers are readily made available on archive. All of you might be knowing this. 
So uh, they showed that uh, this is the original phase, say, initial reconstruction, and they applied reconstruct optimization, right? So they got this results, and then they looked at the phase aging application generator that introduced. So you can see that starting from zero to 18, they could produce something 60 plus, similarly for this boy, and for this person. So you can see that how will you look 20 years later using this conditional GAN. You must be thinking that there were applications 10 years before uh, where you could see face uh, changing, face aging. Those were mostly image processing based applications, right? So um, they were not that efficient and they could not do this for a large number of uh, large number of inputs uh, if we look at the more recent developments so cycle gan by zu et al uh, which was uh, introduced by um, in 2017 iccv uh, you can see here that uh, different types of images and you expect the GAN to produce. So it does not have, it does not have, for example, zebra, uh, this kind of image, uh, but from zebra to horse, it has to, I'm mean, sorry, it does not have horse kind of image from zebra to horse or horse to zebra, like you can see horse to zebra, summer to winter, winter to summer, all these things like photograph, monet, Van Gogh, so these different types of painters application, they could see photo to monet, monet to photo. So these are different painters uh, who would have painted this scene like this. All this could be generated using cycle GAN. Uh, so it was a popular GAN model developed, sorry, just a minute. Um, before that, I would like to. Cycle um, again. Okay, it's not uh, available here. So, a popular GAN model that was introduced uh, was a style GAN. Uh, it is very much uh, available. You can you can see that this was in, you can find that this was introduced by Nvidia researchers in 2018, and code was made public in 2019. If uh, I click at the demo, let me check share the screen. Can you see the can you see the content? Can you see uh, YouTube? No, ma'am. Okay, so let me share the content again. Stop sharing and share the content again. So uh, let us uh, enjoy this style-based uh, uh, um, video. By watching this video, style-based capabilities and power of style-based generator architecture for generative adversarial network. Can you see the full or not? I don't know, I'm uh, getting some... Hello? No, ma'am. No, it is not visible. Excuse me, let me... I'm sorry, my WebEx, it is saying not responding. 
Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I don't know. My WebEx is not responding. I don't know what happened. We are able to hear you, ma'am. But uh, okay, yeah. but I can't. I don't have any option to do. Uh, give me a minute. I'm sorry, I can't uh, do anything with this. No, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll come, I'll go, I'll. What happened? Nothing is happening. I'm sorry. It just says like yeah, right now we are able to see your whiteboard. Uh -huh. Yellow it was yeah. just showing that you are trying to share some content. Hello, hello, madam. Are you there?
participants please hold on for a minute madam will join Hello, sir. Uh, any instruction? Yeah, madam yeah. is joining. She uh, went out of the me meeting, so she's joining. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Madam, I made you the present room. Okay, I'm so sorry. There was some uh, error. I don't know what happened at my end. Signals were right, everything was yeah, maybe right. Maybe there was some technical glitch here. Yeah. So uh so I will quickly finish. In fact, I <laughs> sorry. Uh, I will go quickly then somewhere we were where aging, right? I got stuck somewhere. Yeah, style again, cycle again, and then 
we were at style then. Okay. So I was trying to show you a video. And I share just a minute. Um, wait for a while. I just wanted to show you a video. And somehow it so happened that everything got stuck. Uh, yeah, that is there. Okay. So now I share. When I use share, does it? Uh, okay. I was showing you a video. Please check. What can you see the video? See this? Uh, my slide? Am I uh, so not my slide? A page? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. YouTube. Okay. We are a YouTube page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just running. Uh... <laughs> Course style pose, hair, face shape, middle styles, facial features, eyes, fine styles, color, scheme, and all those things. Using this, so these are the can you believe that these people don't exist in the world? We don't think so, but Dad uh, has produced these images. Additionally, the generator automatically separates inconsequential uh, in variation from high level attributes like pose, identity, etc. So, coarse noise is large scaling curling of hair, fine noise is finer details like texture, no noise, featureless painterly look, right? So, uh, all these things they also add in their style cans. Now, you can see different realizations. So you can see the noise is still they are changing. Can you believe that GANs can generate these images? You can once you do it yourself. Problems of mode collapse uh, are almost like you can say that the almost over depends on the domain in which you're working. If you're working in the biomedical applications, uh, 
if you wish to generate new images, still there are a lot of challenges. And uh, it is difficult to, uh, somebody was asking about data augmentation. If I want to, gen if I want to generate images for, uh, for gen, uh, for uh, for uh, biomedical applications, so that the number of images can be more for training something. Then in that case, you can see that uh, this uh, GAN can be a, a good alternative. But then, what happens that you need to have a good uh, number of images for the discriminator to train, so that your generator becomes equally powerful. Uh, unfortunately, in medical domain or in many other such domains, it is not possible, right? So I continue with this. Mm. So we can choose the strength at which each style is applied with respect to an average phase. High strength, that is maximal, vari maximal variation, some broken images, low strength, reduced variation, no broken images. Negative strength with anti-phase. Let's see how does it do. Also do interpolations as we well. see. I just wanted to show you like here through experience only you can do that and uh, now I share again my slide is here share so it's a beautiful uh, demo model that they produced by Nvidia Nvidia is you know is a leader in producing hardware and also the Mm, soft, I mean, intelligent uh, softwares for intelligence. Um, so let us see how a style GAN generator architecture is different from other architectures. If I consider a traditional architecture of generator of this, so let us take a traditional architecture on the left side of this. You can see that we have, we introduce a latent variable, right? We normalize this latent variable. Normalize this latent variable. Then we apply maybe some fully connected layer, then pixel norm, convolutional neural net, uh, convolutional layer. So so many things normalization can uh, can be done. And then finally, if, I mean, you keep on doing this is a single architecture. I mean, sing, uh, a single layer architecture. Single layer means there are no parallel layers or nothing like that. And so it is a traditional GAN which is used, right? Now, if I look at the other side, on this side, the style-based generator, this is just a high-level uh, overview of this. So what we do, we have a latent, ve uh, latent vector, that is we normalize. Uh, 
uh, we have a mapping network like fully connected layers, all these fully connected layers. I hope you know what is fully connected layer. And I take out a W, that is some feature is extracted from this latent variable. And now this feature at different stages, right, are added as a style. If I told you like those styles which were shown, those styles variations are added here. So what happens that we have uh, some kind of network which is also using, which is based on having attention on different kind of styles. And then again, the noise is added here. That is variations are added here. So you can see that this simple GAN, what is the difference between a lot of uh, I mean, changes that I'm putting, different styles I'm putting, different variations I'm putting by noise, and that is what is best in this uh, synthesis network G, which is giving lot of varieties for styles, as well as lot of variations based on the noise that we add. Right? So that is why style GAN architecture has proved to be very, very interesting. Now coming to the star GAN, which you will be doing today, uh, version two, Unified Generative Adversarial Networks for Multi-Domain Image-to-Image Translation. I told you image-to-image -image translation. Like here, input is say this, blonde hair, gender, age, pale skin, the same fellow with this. Similarly, input is this, the angry, happy, fearful. These variations are introduced and this can be found in this uh, it, this uh, paper can be found here in this archive. So StarGAN, today we'll be doing more on StarGAN. Uh, StarGAN version 2 was uh, appeared uh, only very recently. CVPR, I hope many of you know that uh, CVPR uh, is one of the most prestigious conferences of computer vision and pattern recognition. It is the top conference of uh, this. And uh, so you can see that uh, the quality of pictures with different kind of like variations which are given here, like same fellow and variations. And this is not only for humans, this is also for the cats and dogs family, like other families. I again would like to present a demo. I'm sorry, I'm today it's more on a demo. Um, like, I don't know if you can see this. I'm sharing content. So today you will be doing in the lab this part. So it is another form of a style again. I will not call it a style again. Here also some styles are changed. And remember that <laughs> you can see the previous one, there are some Indian figures also. So you have the latent uh, vector from the coming from the fellow whose picture is there, right? then you would like to change the styles. So the reference is gender in style, source wearing the reference style, and the generated images are produced. Same thing happens for dogs and cats. So, uh, I don't have, uh, can I go to new share again? I think uh, this one.
I don't know why it is three. It is showing three contents sharing again. I am having some problem. Uh, you are sharing three applications. It is showing. I am again stuck in a problem. So now that is uh, mostly I have finished it. This part. Uh, okay. So uh, I would like to finally end with another application in data hiding. Those who do not know what is data hiding by data hiding. This is what we have been doing. Uh, so data hiding is uh, precisely hiding some data in another cover. Right, so like, for example, within your bag, you would like to hide something. So similarly, this here data hiding means hiding data in a cover. That cover could be an image cover, could be a 3D model cover, could be a text. Uh, so that is known as also known as a steganography. So uh, we came across this interesting paper hidden. Uh, in which we, uh, this, this was uh, an, a paper by Fei Fei Li, who is from Stanford University and is student Johnson, no, sorry, student Zhao, uh, hiding data with deep networks. So what is done? Data hiding in images, which is blind in the sense that at the decoder level, uh, you have, you don't have the blind means, what happens? Then at the decoder level, when the data is uh, taken out, so at encoder level, what we do, that we hide the data within a cover image. At the decoder level, we don't have the original cover image, but we have the data hidden image that is known as the stego image. So convolutional neural networks are used for steganography and watermarking here. And models here learn to reconstruct hidden information in an encoded image, despite the presence of arbitrary, arbitrary type of image distortion. So it is assumed that in image steganography, we are hiding data within an image, okay? And then we are communicating this uh, stego image, which is containing the data also, in a, through an open channel. When we are sending it through an open channel, what happens? There can be many intentional uh, distortions or unintentional distortions also. So there can be several types of image distortions due to noise or due to some channel difficulties. So here, the in the in uh, this was one of the first data hiding scheme uh, that was introduced in 2018 uh, using a generative adversarial network type of uh, um, type of setting where they could increase the capacity of data hiding within the within an image they could also do they could also ensure secrecy of the image like secrecy of the data and the robustness so what happens when you increase the capacity when something is being hidden imagine that your bag is a plain bag if you keep on hiding uh, more and more uh, objects within this, the bag will will look like an inflated bag. So definitely it will show that something is hidden there, right? So uh, if you increase the capacity, the security or the secrecy of the data uh, is lost to some extent. And, there, and similarly, robustness means against any kind of attack, if you wish to secure your data, uh, how to make the algorithm robust so that in spite of attacks on the stego image, you can um, you can extract meaningful information at the decoder level, right? That is the idea. So this was the model architecture of hidden. Uh, so model architecture of hidden is like this. I seek your attention, please. So I have a cover image, right? And I have a message. You can see here, this is a cover image. This is a cover image. 
and you have a message now i have to i have to i have to hide this message in the cover image now this message will be in bits so what do i do uh, suppose your bits are for example 10111011 suppose this is the bit in fact there are long messages i will what i will be doing this one if suppose my image is a 4 cross 4 image i will be making this one a 4 cross 4 image with 1111 everywhere 1111 and 1111 i hope you understand what i'm saying that instead of this just one i will be making an image of the same size as the this cover image which will be hiding the data and each bit is transformed to an image with the same entry throughout the image throughout the vector throughout the matrix so what i do is this after this i will be duplicating and concatenating so what i do is that i will be uh, using a neural network convolutional neural network here i will be changing my image i will be like uh, transforming this image using the convolutional neural network then i will be duplicating all these uh, image uh, hidden bits to be hidden in this and then i will be applying now this is one thing and then i will be using an skip connection i will be applying an image and then i hope you are getting that i am concatenating the output from a convolutional neural network uh, applied on an image with the data bits i concatenate it suppose the output of a convolutional neural network turns out to be say uh, 64 cross 64 and suppose there are 16 filters applied so 16 so this is this 16 how it is decided the number of bits that i am choosing i should be approximately deciding this number of filters accordingly then that is embedded in the that is added in the image so i have an image i will be first further concatenating the original image with the output thus received from the convolutional neural network and then i will be applying again uh, a convolutional neural network and will encode this image so what happens i get at the end of this this is an encoder network i get at the end of this some noise some some kind of not noise sorry some kind of encoded image on this encoded image i will be adding some noise vector so the noisy image will be sent to the decoder network and the decoder network will be trained on the noisy image without any information of this cover image to extract or decode the message which is the same message as is shown here is that clear to you what i am saying that i am using two networks encoder and decoder encoder's work is to embed the data in the image and decoder's work is to decode from the noisy image the message that message that has been added so this is the original message and this is the m out the decoded message so encoder will be trained on what decreasing the distance between m out and m in that will be the decoder training encoder training will be what encoder training will be to reduce the noise reduce the uh, reduce the reduce the difference between the encoded image and the actual image so that it should look like a leaner image there should not be any change in the image so it will be working on image reconstruction loss so that minimize the loss of reconstruction and this will be decoder will be minimizing the loss between like message reconstruction loss right it will be working on message reconstruction loss encoder will be working on image reconstruction loss 
and here is the adversarial network which will be looking at the cover or embedded so it will be basically adversarial it will be classifying whether the image that is coming from the encoder is a what is a cover image or encoded image it is a plain image or an encoded image so this kind of adversarial network training was done by zhao and his uh, colleagues uh, and here there are three networks encoder decoder and an adversary so adversary's job is basically a classification job and this job which is encoder decoder is basically the generator's job the actual generator's job is this so uh, so what happens that the cover is there you have message you can see that cover image through the encoder through the convolutional neural networks comes out with w cross h suppose you have w cross h cross c the number of channels in the image suppose there are three channels or one channel channel depends on the number of colors that you are using rgb it can be grayscale image on this i will be uh, what i will be doing i will be trans i mean coming uh, this will be coming out of a network convolutional neural, neural network and suppose that is w cross h cross 64 64 filters are there i will be uh, these m bits i will be transforming into w cross h cross m as i told you i will be concatenating this and then i will be again sending it to a network so it will be w cross h cross 64 plus m so it is of size w cross h with these many uh, channels 64 plus m this i will be sending to this then finally i will uh, transform this to w cross h cross 64 and then i will be again applying a convolutional layer to make it w cross h cross c the same like this one x is the same as the channel the size is the same and we will be comparing this uh, this image cover image with this image now the idea of data data hiding is that this stego image which is containing the information should not reveal the information so this difference between x and y hat should be very small okay so that is the encoder model now if i look at the decoder model decoder model will be basically looking at the message m prime right it does not have any information of m it does not have any information of m but it is looking at what message has been revealed or what message has been uh, given right so this is the encode uh, sorry i'm i'm not saying that any uh, decoder will be trained on minimizing the distance between the original message and the extracted message but it does not have any information of the cover image the difference like uh, what exactly was the original cover image and uh, the stego image so it does not have any access to that right so that is what is the decoder model and the adversaries model is like uh, stego stego image is coming and the cover image is coming and it has to only classify between the cover and stego so this kind of application is also introduced um, there is another uh, in paper that has been introduced by stego gan high capacity image stegography with gans it loosely follows the similar architecture as of hidden and also uses gans to hide binary data of arbitrary length up to its payload in an arbitrary size cover image and uh, the idea is the same but what is interesting is it was able to uh, have a capacity of 4 bits per pixel bpp stands for per pixel it could add 4 bits which is which was next to impossible in the previous uh, traditional machine learning or uh, traditional methods using image processing stegogram architecture is also similar uh, like that 
uh, I will not go into details of this. I will end up with this because I wanted to, I would like to hear from you. GANs are generative models that are implemented. I'm extremely sorry for the inconvenience caused to you because of some disturbances at my end. Uh, so GANs are generative models that are implemented using two neural networks, generator and discriminator, number one. Generator tries to generate samples from the random noise as input and discriminator tries to distinguish samples from the generator and discriminator like date, actual data sample uh, actual data samples and the fake both the networks are trained adversarially in tandem to fool the other component in this process both models become better at their respective tasks and as the capacity of discriminator increases the capacity of generator also increases now there you can find plethora of GAN models for uh, for different applications and this is a hot area of research for applications in different domains especially in biomedical applications we tried but we were not very happy with this in data um, hiding we found that this is a very good application and it is providing it is providing promising results one of my students who worked on this I took the slides from his uh, on data hiding from his presentation, Bhaskar. He's uh, now in IIT Bombay for his PhD program. And another student is working, uh, Manjula, who is working on 3D. Uh, he's, she's working on 3D models, uh, CAD models. And she's using uh, uh, graph neural networks for uh, data hiding. So there are plenty of references uh, and some references I have already added in the uh, slides. And that is uh, all from my side. And I'm sorry, I <laughs> did not add one last slide. That was thank you slides. I thank you all. And uh, my, uh, I will add that uh, my email ID and phone number uh, in the last slide and I will share with you. That is all from my side. Any questions if you have? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much for your valuable knowledge. Yeah. Ma'am, I have a, it's not a question, I have this, it's a query. That ma'am, uh, as, as through GAN, we can create several images, say for example, aging from, if we, uh, we can predict uh, 20 years later, images so can is there any possibility that uh, can we can we uh, uh, can we predict the the, the the zoom version that for example we have a, um, a microscopic image uh, which is cap captured in uh, say for example uh, 10x zoom so what would be the what would be the, how the uh, that you want so to save for uh, super resolution like at super resolution Uh, not super See, the not, idea uh, is but so for example hmm. zoom in yes ma'am yeah yes ma'am uh, but the but the property should be the uh, very, so example, uh, very good question you want to say that you would like to zoom in from a suppose i have yes. an image and you would like to zoom in in different places right well this is very much possible because uh, what you need to do is to discriminator you should have this kind of uh, image samples available for discriminator because discriminator should be able to correctly classify them right these are yes. good pictures these are bad pictures so those zoom in i believe that that uh, should be possible but only thing is that you should provide some samples like not some sample in fact these are deep learning models are data hungry so they need uh, thousands and thousands of examples for such categories so th that is very much possible you can crop the image you can create data and then you can apply super resolution uh, networks on this cropped type suppose i have a uh, 256 cross 256 image i will be trans um, I mean, I will be 
having 64 cross 64 grids uh, of 64 cross 64, I will be cropping each part. And then I will be using a super resolution network on that cropped part. I will create a super resolution image. And then that you can give as a input to discriminator. If that can be given, I think that should be possible. Okay. I hope I have given you the idea. That means, ma'am, uh, the, the, from which scale to what scale we're going to generate, we have some images of that scale. So for 10x zoom to uh, 100x zoom, we want to move it. So we have to have some images from some 100x. Images, yeah. some. But you may, okay. you may not be having those images. And that is the reason I uh, request you to apply a super resolution um, auto encoder model. So if I apply a super resolution for super resolution applications, so at least to, to some extent you will be able to get, right? So there, there are auto encoders which uh, help you, uh, which help you transform an image to a high resolution image. So what you can do is that you can, you may not be having real images. You can synthetically ge generate images by, uh, taking different uh, uh, crops from the image, putting them as input to uh, uh, autoencoder, take out as a high, re high, high resolution image, and then use this as input to the discriminator of the uh, generative adversary network. So you will be actually doing two tasks, one after the other. Okay, ma'am. Have I made my point clear? Yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> So first you will train an autoencoder network and then you will train your generate uh, GAN. Okay, so first we have to create the uh, synthetic data and then we feed it to the... Take any data from the... Yeah, for, for creating that data, you will have to perhaps, if the, those images are available, nothing like that. But if the images are not available, which are normally not available, you can use some ideas of super resolution creating super, 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 uh, super resolution for that. Uh, Ashwini Shinde is asking, can we use GAN for audio processing? Definitely, you can use whatever is the data and classification data you can give to your discriminator model. Accordingly, that uh, audio can be generated. These uh, like highly synthetic images like Alexa or what are these? These are actually generated by these types of uh, gang type of network. Because you can see that six, six years, 10 years ago, when a robot was speaking, it was just looking like a robot. Like you must have seen that movie by that Rajni Kant, where uh, the robots were speaking like a very mechanical kind of discrete type of output voice. But now you see, you cannot distinguish between Alexa, Siri, and Google Assistant. They appear to be just like human, somebody is some human is speaking. Any other question you have? Uh, so yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, good afternoon, ma'am. I just, uh, I asked this question because, uh, uh, like uh, we say that GAN is, uh, uh, it is not used for classification. It is generally used for regression type of application. So that's why I thought, can we, means how can we use if the problem is of classification, then we cannot, we can we use this or we cannot use? No, basically for classification, you have very beautiful networks. So why we should be using this kind of uh, uh, this kind of setting for classification. We have beautiful networks which are doing wonders. So why we should train uh, some two networks for this? You can train single network that can do wonders in classification. Uh, yeah. yeah, just just a curiosity. I asked this yeah. question. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? So if there are no questions, I would like to introduce to you my PhD student, uh, Ms. Poonima Singh Thakur. She will be uh, taking uh, the lab session. Uh, I have requested her to uh, see GAN. Uh, 
writing the code within two hours is not possible. So I asked her to take some recent code uh, from the GitHub and explain to you. Uh, I mean, writing the code for GAN requires a little bit of more skills, but then you have to understand that uh, you will be first writing the discriminators structure, like neural network for discriminator, neural network for generator, and there is something which is to be known as paused. Like, you know, the during the discriminator training, I will keep the weights of the generator paused uh, and uh, I mean, uh, intact. And during generator training, I will keep the discriminator's uh, weights as intact. So that is the crucial idea here. But uh, Purnima has taken the code, uh, has thought to explain to you the code of Stargan. She has simplified the code uh, which was available at the public data set for you to, expl for, to, to explain to you. And she will be uh, telling, I mean, demonstrating and also explaining to you. So um, with this, I would like to thank once again, Dr. Wilfred um, for, uh, for giving me this opportunity. Thanks, Dr. Gottfried. And uh, thank you all the participants for your interest in this. I hope you will have a good time uh, even after this. This session, I'm sorry, there was a lot of disturbance, so I could not, uh, at, I mean, I was not present in between. And that is all from my side. I will share the slides, don't worry. I will share my contact details also. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, thanks a lot. So, uh, I mean, it was a pleasure to have you. So it was uh, a very good uh, uh, two sessions where uh, we all learned uh, so much from uh, your presentations. So we are really thankful, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I take your leave then? Yes, ma'am. Please, please. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So participants, uh, we shall meet uh, at 2.30. Thank you.